All right, check this out, freaks. Another cleanup, cleanup city. That's what we're doing, cleaning up the city, one yard at a time. I'm afraid of this backyard, even though I was here late in the season. It's a bad sign right there. Oh my gosh. Yeah, that's a bad sign. Oh my gosh. Now we got some sticks down. Well, the good thing is, it's getting warm. I might actually take off my top shirt here when I get started. I can feel it coming. I can feel a I can feel the um, snow shovel will get some use here as soon as I get these in a pile. Oh goody. Don't be scared. It's just hard work. <laughs> but it's work. Okay. Alright, so this seems pretty familiar, huh? If you watched the final couple episodes of my This Week in Lawn Care series, then you notice I did this yard right before Christmas or something like that. And here I am, first of the spring, and it's pretty much the same condition, even worse. <laughs> because these front yards here, that whole neighborhood, full of oak trees, and the oak trees fall later in the season and they they don't all just come down at once you get stragglers who just keep going throughout the whole winter and the backyard is my favorite gumballs <laughs> yeah so you know those things too man they'll they'll hold them through the winter sometimes and then boom you know first spring storm or whatever here they come and you are in trouble and i've never really found out a good way to get rid of those gumballs um, I just have to do it old school, hard, unless you luck out and they're like in a front yard and you get to blow them all out to the curb and scoop them up and take them away. You see, one of the problems that I deal with living in an older city, and when I say older, they could be 50 or 100 years old. Any time before they actually had their act together and planned things out, okay? Obviously, they didn't plan things out when they built these houses. They left this giant oak tree, or they planted that oak tree there, right up next to the house, the foundation, where it's going to push in the basement walls, things like that. Heck, they might have put the sewer line right along there, and then planted the oak tree on top of it. You don't know. Or it could have been there from previously when it was just a field. And in these cities, all the lots are oddball shapes and sizes. So like this backyard, I have to dig the leaves and the gumballs out of that ground cover. And like in the front there, the ivy and stuff, I have to dig it out of there. And so it's a mixed match bunch of stuff. And I am used to that. But most people avoid it once they get you know, a full schedule. And I do too. I don't take on any more lawns like this one. I need the backyards to be accessible to the big mower and for me to be able to blow everything out and scoop it up, take it away. Now look at my Velky here. When I flip around, it's going backwards. It doesn't want to go back forward for me. That's because this morning the tire was low on one side, so I aired it up, but I over aired it. So I was having trouble. So I quickly switched into BMX flatland mode. And there you go. I'm a little out of practice with the mower, the blower, the trimmer, everything. But I'll be getting there soon. So what I did was I just um, blew all this down here. I raked up a little bit, it's in there. And I used the handheld blower. And um, I blew it all away from the tree and all that stuff because I was just making a mess. And now I'm gonna go ahead and mulch the rest of this and just kind of go around and get it to powder on the sidewalk and then um, blow it off. And that'll be the front. The back would be a different story, though. <laughs> yep. I've said it before, so I guess I'll say it again. The boulevard is the lawn care professional's dumping grounds. That's where we hide 
debris that can be easily mulched up instead of being scooped up and taken away. Because if we have to gather it all up, that takes more time. If we have to haul it away, we have to take it to a dump. And that costs money in most cases, and it also takes time. It fills up your truck. You might not be able to go through your whole day without emptying it before you get to some more yards. The stuff builds up from each lawn. Before you know it, you don't even have room for a mower on your trailer. So it's cheaper for the customer and way more efficient for us. And there really shouldn't ever be a problem doing this unless you went crazy and did a whole cleanup on the yard and tried to mulch all of that into the boulevard. Then you would just smother out the grass and it would never recover. But that's not what we're doing here. This is just a normal spring cleanup. And I already scooped up about a half a can full of the thickest stuff. So the rest, even though it looks like a lot on the sidewalk there, it can be easily taken care of. And at the end, I still have a little bit left over into the street. And I go ahead and scoop that up too. Luckily, this house is maybe three minutes from my home. So it's the first lawn of the day for me. And I don't mind filling up all my trash cans on it because I'm going to hit the dump somewhere throughout my route. Now again, I have an advantage being in this small town and all my lawns are right here within one mile of my house. If you put a pin in a map and you circle it, I don't think I break the one mile marker maybe two or three times a week out of like the 72 accounts that I have. Only three of them are like a mile and a half from my house, and that helps. So when I know I have cleanups and a bunch of stuff to take away, I plan my day out accordingly. Sometimes I'll start there if I think that it's only going to fill up half my truck bed. Then I go ahead and cut three or four more lawns. I'm really close to the dump now, which is also within that one mile of my home. And then I dump it all, and then I can finish my route. I can even swing by here, which is what I actually did, fill up some more stuff from the backyard, and I leave it in my truck all night, and the next day, I go straight to the dump, then start my day. So, that's an advantage that I do have. That stuff comes into play once you've got your route really condensed, and you've been in the business enough that you can turn away lawns that are far away. But at first, I had to take everything, even stuff in St. Louis. That's as good as it gets in the old part of town for the price I'm charging. <laughs> I'm just going to rake that up. Eh, it'll be a lot better here in a month. All oh, this will be nice green grass. Well, I got a mess here. Look at all that. Look at that corner. It's all up in there. And I got all this out here. And a big pile right there. Eh, something happened. Actually, they don't care what I do or when. I could leave half of it. If <laughs> I could put in piles and leave it, come back tomorrow. but. I'm gonna eat it all out here today. Okay, I'll be back for the rest. And the rest is right there. Right there. And ugh, right here. But my cans are full and I'm hungry, so I'm gonna get some sneaky snacks. I'm gonna dump this stuff off first so I can enjoy my meal without thinking about, oh, I can't forget to go to the dump before I pull up the next yard. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and dump this stuff, eat some snacks, and then hit another yard on the other side of town. Tonight, probably after I pick the girls up, I'm gonna pull up in the alley and just scoop up that stuff in my cans and then um, um, swing by the dump, drop it off, and um, 
go home, get cleaned up, have dinner with the girls, hang out, maybe make a shark video or something, <laughs> and um, watch some Cali muscle. Alright, do our little normal thing. That's how it goes. There you go. It's a heaping helping of gumballs. One yard. One yard. All those. But this is actually yard number two. I did a little bitty small one. Well, it's not that small, but I only had to do the backyard. Front yard, it, there wasn't anything to do. And the backyard, I just kind of mulched it all up. Pull it around, look good. I'm ready. I'll be, I'll be glad when I get all these done. It's getting warm. Ah, yes. The hard way. That's the easy way. If it's going to break your rake when you push it, just kick it. yard is pretty jacked up. Like as far as grass growing, nah, way too many trees. I mean, there are four giant trees right here. I'll even pick them up with my hand. There's one can. Things are getting better. Somebody's racing out there on the road. But look, a gigantic tree in this little yard. A gigantic tree, four of them. How do you expect to grow grass? You can't. How do you expect to get these leaves out of here? Well, I could blow the rest of them out of here, but I'm just gonna jump right in. Don't be scared, Greg. All that's in there are probably snakes, cats, rats, and bats. Oh well. I do need my blower for this. I'm just trying to get the bulk of it out of here right now. Let's see what I'm working with here. Well, I'm all done for today. It's the second load and I ran out of room on my truck for with the trash cans. And that's just gonna have to wait till next time. I will be back here. There will be some green grass, at least in the front yard. <laughs> and I'll dig out more along here and stuff because they haven't done anything next door and their leaves are gonna come back over and who knows, it's a tree yard. You know, it is what it is. But I got a yard to go to now that I don't think I'm gonna have to, um, Break up leaves. I'll leave that. <laughs> There's a freak for you. Look where I'm at. I'm back at this yard. This is another home away from home. This is the one I cut with my dad on that video because my father actually had this yard before I did. 
I mean, I was cutting it with him, it was his, and then now I'm doing them too. Here I am, 20 years later, still cutting it. So this is the first one of the year. And again, limited options. I'll pick that up in a minute. We got a stick, some leaves. We got an old ash pit. See, you know you're in the old part of town when they have an ash pit. Do you even know what an ash pit is? Do you even ash pit, bro? Now, somebody threw some stuff in here that I know they didn't throw that in there. Okay. Back in the day. Back in the day. Back before my time. Everybody had an ash pit in their backyard. You took that out there and you burnt your trash. Before there was such thing as trash pickup in this town. You, you, or maybe there was, but you had to pay differently. I don't know what the store was, but everybody burned their trash back in the day in this town. Every backyard in this whole area had them and you can still see remnants of them. Like this one's still intact, but in a lot of these yards, you'll still see like where it was, the concrete area. And um, you just burn stuff, burn your leaves, sticks, trash, old tires, stinking, polluting the whole world, right? It didn't matter. That's what you did back then. So, um, I don't know. Thought I'd share that with you. See that right there? You know what that is? That's a Quonset hut. That was an empty lot. And someone got this from the Army Depot and put it up here. Because the Army Depot closed. But someone got a Quonset hut. Figure that out, huh? There's some more history. <laughs> I'm full of useless knowledge. Ask me something important. I don't know. Who would, who would know something useful? Not me. Let's see what we got going on here. Oh, more messages. Well, we're gonna go ahead and do this one. You know what, I might just go ahead and just film a little bit, because you've seen this yard before, but I'll, I'll do some trimming because I haven't really got to have a lot of trimming fun yet. But this should be a good one. It's gonna be good. Watch out for this crazy guy. Whoa! Hey, What's going on? I ain't gonna thank every day. Another year of fun. I can enjoy this weather right here. Yeah. Hey, how how many um tons of stuff do you guys take out of there a year, do you think? Out of the dump over there. Huh? How many tons of um like grass clippings and leaves do you guys think you take out of there each year? For the year? Yeah. A whole lot. Every day of summer? I think it's, a, I think it's a five tons of load, if not more. Right. You know, it's according to what I get, wet grass or whatever. Right. You guys fill up at least so a, we, a, a semi every I day. Three trucks a day. Whoa, three of them. Yeah. Holy crap. So we get a lot of it, so. All right. Well, hey, I'll bring you some more. Bring it on. Job security. Huh? Cool. Yeah. Keep me out of that shack. <laughs> okay, buddy. All right. I'll see. We'll see you. See you later. his job all day is just stay out there he must have came back for something and then um, he just every time I dump leaves or grass or anybody does he just puts it in semi trucks and take it out of there so he said here comes another semi right now he's got to go fill it so 
so they fill three of those a day with lawn clippings and debris from people like me. You get your license and your sticker and you're allowed to go in and dump all day. You pay a one-time fee for the year and that dude loads every bit of it into those trucks all year long, every day. Time to lay an edge on this lawn, the first one of the season. Now you'll notice all the stuff flying out of the groove. I am fully aware that this is happening, so when I turn around, I am making sure that I keep the guard aimed down enough that if any little rock comes flying up, it's going to hit the guard and go somewhere else instead of that front window or the storm door window. Because in my day, I have broken two storm door windows and two car windows. One of the cars was parked in the driveway and I was edging along the sidewalk and bam, so things happen. And that's one reason why I keep the guard on there. There's another reason too. Now you'll notice I'm going ahead and double edging. That's because the lawn isn't fully grown yet. This is a Granite City mix. What I mean by that is the lawns are mix match worth of grass. So there's patches that haven't fully turn green yet and so therefore it looks goofy so I had to go down the edge a couple times and get it right and so as I go along here uh, now I'm gonna like flat 45 I call this just so that um, my mower doesn't leave any stragglers it's the first one of the year I wanted to be able to see what I got going on down here I don't want anything to lean in back over to groove after I trim it so now I look it's cleaned out and I'm going along now one other thing about this trimming you can hold the trimmer any which way you feel comfortable. Do not let people tell you that there is one standard way to hold the trimmer because I have seen them held upside down, sideways, and backwards. And I'm joking, but not joking when I say that. Upside down on your shoulder is very common for some people. You might be ambidextrous. We don't know if you're right-handed, left-handed. Whatever gets the job done. Just be aware of which direction things are flying. Now, here's a history lesson for some of you. I'm in the old part of town, but my whole town is old. So this thing that I'm about to jump over is an ash pit. They're brick, so they don't burn down. And what happens is you would take stuff out there, usually all your lawn clippings and debris, in the fall, all your leaves and everything, shove them in there, light it on fire. Everybody had them in their backyards. Some people would even burn their trash. We're talking 80, 100 years ago. This was happening commonplace. But when I was a kid in the 70s, I remember people burning stuff in ash pits all the time. Over the years, they fell down. People have removed them. The city doesn't want you doing that anymore. <laughs> and the fire department sure doesn't. So things have changed. But yes, they're still around standing in some places. Hard to believe. Now look what time it is. <laughs> it's time for the Troy Built Self-Propelled Front Wheel Drive. I do prefer the front wheel drive because I feel like it doesn't push me away from things as I am making turns. Sometimes I have to go around round little flower beds. And with the rear wheel drive, it pushes me away from them. This one pulls me right along and I just kind of, I can lift the back end up too. And when I get to the end of stuff and I need to pivot and turn around, I pop a wheelie, pivot on the back wheels. It's all good. I just did it right there. Look at that. Drop it down. It takes off. <laughs> That's my style. Also, I use a dust mask. Oh my gosh. I have learned that the hard way back in the 80s. You don't have to be allergic to whatever type of leaves you're mulching. It's not really the kind of leaves. It's just the fact that all this dust particles it could be anything it could be well it could be asbestos right <laughs> but it could be any type of particles throughout the day going up in your nose if i didn't have a mask on i'd be breathing all this stuff and it just plugs you up makes your body sick it wants to get rid of it it throws a fit look at that i'm popping a wheelie uh, my mower's throwing a fit <laughs> and i learned dust mask when you're mulching just do it. Don't think twice. You'll stay healthy. Pick up your sticks <laughs> and keep on moving. Now this lawn is one of my oldest accounts. I've cut it on video with my father. Between me and him, we have cut this thing probably a thousand times. That's no exaggeration. Maybe only eight or nine hundred times, but somewhere in that range. 
so I can do this blindfolded in my sleep. It's GPS programmed in my head. <laughs> so what happens then is it becomes easy peasy. So if you're new to lawn care and you're just now picking up lawns and every new one that you add just seems so hard, they will get better with time. By the second season, you will be cruising through and be so efficient that you won't even remember doing half of the stuff. Think of it like this. Have you ever driven somewhere like to work or back home and pulled in the driveway and thought, I don't even remember stopping at any of those stoplights and turning or other cars or anything. I just did that on autopilot. Well, that's what these yards can be like. Woo. Check this out. You needed a mask for this yard. All I did was mulch it. Good thing it was dry because you can mulch dry leaves a lot easier. But look what it did to my mower. All that mulch on there. Just powdery, just like shoots up from underneath it here and just all around. So um, I'm gonna blow it off with the blower right now. But when I get home after a day like this, you unscrew that screw right here and there's a filter. You take it out, you take it away then. Once you get it out of there, you take it away from the mower so the dust doesn't go up in, you know, into your carb. And you take it and you like bang it on a pole or a fence or, you know, your neighbor's house or whatever, your shoe. And then you put it back on there, clean it out. But one of the things um, I smell when you do a mulch job like that, just mulching up all these dry leaves, it smells like somebody's burning leaves. And that person is me. I'm actually cutting them up with the blade to the point that they actually smell like they're on fire or something. So I still have to share that with you because that's the truth. It smells like burning leaves around here. And I know where that came from. The wind's blowing that way. So I'm blowing from this side. Okay, all done. I'm gonna go get my girls. We might go to McDonald's tonight because I can go there trashed. They're not exactly a fancy place. Let's check out my edge. It'll look better once the grass is green and it needs another one, but whatever. Next time, there's always a next time. I'll be back in two weeks, exactly. And then I do have the option. I go every week on this yard when it's growing, then every two weeks when it's um, getting dry. So it's up to me. I like that. Look at this. I can tell what that is from here. That is Country Club Vodka. This is a half pint plastic cheap stuff. There you go, Country Club. Now, how did I know that? Because I have sold thousands of these. So you guys aren't cutting grass where you find little half pints of Country Club everywhere. I am. All right, these Country Club is made in St. Louis. It's right off Kings Highway is where they make this stuff. It's the cheap stuff. That's probably like, it was 290. That's with tax and everything. It was like 270 plus tax. And, um, oh yeah, I know all of the alcohol. I know all the cigarettes. People used to come in 7-Eleven. I've sold thousands and thousands of that. They go, oh, I'm off work, man. Time for a little R&R. &R. They mean rich and rare, okay? So you get down a half pint of rich and rare. They go, no, man, it's Friday night. Pint night. Oh, okay, Friday night, pint night. And then, yo, G, give me some bumpy face. Bumpy face, Seagram's chin. You gotta know the slang. Unfortunately, I do. But one good thing about that was it was a learning experience for me. I learned what not to do. Because I've seen many people in my personal life have problems with that. I'm not gonna tell you what to do. I'm just saying I learned what I'm not gonna do. So, uh-oh, hear that? That's my alarm. That means get your butt to school, man. Pick those kids up. See, I got my life all planned out. I got all figured out. Set an alarm so you don't forget the kids to school. What kind of parent would do that? We could have them. All right, freaks. I'm at Lowe's. I got a couple bozos acting up. Actually, they were pretty good. Um, what we did was 
just got some mulch the cheap red stuff eight bags it's going on one yard and that's how I do it I don't go get a yard of mulch put in my truck or whatever I don't make a living off of this stuff I just maintain the small little mulch beds for the people that have them that want it maintained some people haven't had me do anything for like years and years but I do spray their beds so nothing um pops up in it comes a motorcycle maniac watch out girls gotta watch out for them motorcycle maniacs can't tell who they are they got a helmet on so that's it okay the total was 28 bucks so they're gonna pay me back for that so 30 bucks for the mulch 30 bucks to put it down 30 bucks to cut the yard first visit 90 bucks they're in there they're all set I'm set it's a done deal and um, I'm actually just gonna leave it in here for a couple days I'm gonna go do their first cut slash little mulch up and then um, I'll probably spray their bed a little bit even though it's still kind of early this stuff really doesn't work that good this time of year and then I will um, just pull up one evening with just like that in this truck and just put the mulch down now someday I might take you out here to the Spanish graveyard why would I do such a thing I don't know because it's kind of freaky There's something going on out there I'll, I'll tell you about it all right no sense in rushing into this not just yet so really I'm not doing that many right now I'm doing like three cleanups or four or five yards if they don't need anything you know this is my yard too over here and then I gotta do this one which is a problem because the car is here so I can't fit my 36 through here so what I'm gonna do is look at this chickweed stuff popping up everywhere look at that I don't know what's going on over here yet I haven't talked to him um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and trim it all, cut it, and probably outline the back. And this is the yard that I'm going to put down that mulch up in here, that red mulch. So I'm going to just um, wait and come back later, even if I have to have the girls with me, put the mulch down and hit the backyard if the car's out of the driveway with the 36. But I got other stuff to do today, so... Um, I'm not going to sit around and push mow that backyard right now. <laughs> Alright, freaks, when I was cutting the front yard, they heard me out there and they moved their car for me. So that's cool. Um, normally I don't even bother um, telling people like, hey, you know, could you move your car or nothing. I don't want to bug them because, you know, they have work schedules, they could be sleeping. And a lot of people are older and it doesn't really matter to me. I just push mow it, but I like when I don't have to. So that was with the 36. And what's cool is then he came out and was talking to me and said go ahead and just do it and so now they're gonna be on the same schedule as as always so I trimmed it kind of blew some stuff around still gotta blow that stuff out so I'm gonna go ahead and give you a clip I'm gonna cut this with that and there will be plenty of times this year where I'll be able to come along and go right through here right on over here back around and then on down Okay, here we go. Here we go, Snapper Pro. Now I'm going to talk to you a little bit about bidding on these properties, but first keep in mind as you're watching me, there's no rhyme or reason to the pattern right now. It's just kind of cutting the tall, thick leaves up. If I have to go over the same spot twice, back and forth, whatever, that's what it is the first time. That's just how it is. These aren't prestige accounts, nothing like that. Second time through, it's outline it and then boom, 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 back and forth pattern, stripe, whatever you want to call it. You know, I don't have a striping kit. I don't need one. That's the deal. Now, check these yards out. You can fit any type of mower on this yard that you want, okay? I have cut this yard lots and lots of times with a regular 21-inch mower. Now, it's a $30 yard and the one next door is a $30 yard. They're side by side and you can fit 
when the car is not in the driveway, you can fit anything on both of them. So, there are people out there that would take these in my town. You know, big guys, big companies, they would take these because they can fit a zero turn in here. Now, here's where it gets tricky about bidding. Everybody wants to get $60 a labor hour for bidding. Now, when I cut this property with my 36, and I go next door and cut that one. I can be in here and out of here in about an hour and ten minutes. I've got two yards, sixty bucks. You know, it give me ten minutes to play around. Sometimes it's not a perfect world where you can always say everything's a half hour. You know, thirty-five minutes. Okay, so that's that's the story there. Now, if you have a twenty-one inch mower, this one yard right here could take you an hour. Does that mean you have to charge $60 for it? No, it means you have a 21 inch mower. That's what you have to do right now. Now, so you, you can price yourself out of the game saying, well, I need to make 45, 50, $60 at labor hour. But if you don't have the right equipment, um, you might not be able to command that in your area because there's going to be someone like me that will do it. And there's going to be someone like the big shots that will come take this yard too. From me, they would love to take it from me. And now, then there's the other problem, okay, where you get a bigger mower and you actually are shooting yourself in the foot and lowballing because you can get it done quicker so you start charging less. You don't want to do that either. You know, I don't want to go down in price and start taking these for 25 just because I can get them done, you know, at a half hour and settle for $50 a labor hour or whatever. So it's, it's kind of a tricky scenario. But just keep that in mind, you guys. If you have a 21 inch mower and a yard is going to take you an hour to do, um, you know, that's just how it is, man. It takes an hour. I've got some of them that I still do that take a long time. You just see me do that one. I had to go front yard and the back yard with a push mower. If I could have fit a 36 in there, I'd have got done a lot quicker. But you know what? I still have that on my, my um, schedule and I still do it. And, you know, I, I got some that I can't race through. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. So um, just kind of keep that in mind when you're bidding that, that um, it's all kind of relative to, you know, the size of your mowers and um, your, your economy in the area, you know, your competition. Well, I really wouldn't even say competition, just the going rate, man. It's just the going rate. You know, you, sometimes you can't charge 60 bucks, you know, for this yard right here, but it could easily take an hour to do if you didn't have some decent equipment. Thought I'd show you this before I leave. I ripped my pants. So I'm gonna go ahead and just um, sew it up. Big old Frankenstein scars. Or I can get a patch. It'd be a twisted sister patch. Yeah. Twist my twist my twist my sister. Check this bush out. Check them all out. I didn't do that. He never had his bushes done ever, ever. And then one day, his son came by with a chainsaw and squared them all up. And now they're like that. I didn't do it. And so um, I think a couple of them are kind of goners now. But I have a feeling now that they've been chopped back. He might ask me to do it. I don't know. I don't know what I could do there. Rip them out, plant some new ones. It'd be a job for you guys. I'm not into that. All right, freaks, I'm a mess. I got trimmer string, backpack blower, sweet tea, uh, Doritos and some snacks and my clipboard and this, okay? I just got another yard and this would be called commercial, but it's just a little small business. Now, um, how did I, first of all, how did I get that yard? Well, I got it because they called me out of the blue from an online ad I must have ran. Now keep, keep in mind, I haven't ran an ad online in four, maybe five years. Back in the day, all I did was them um, free Yahoo local ads, local searches. And then there was one I paid 20 bucks for. And apparently they're still out there because people keep finding me and calling me from stuff like that. Um, a couple of days ago, I had a call. Well, I had a call over the weekend asking if um, I did um, 
like landscaping and sodding yards and they wanted a, a quote on a property and I said I don't do that you know and um, so I guess they were just calling everybody out there now I haven't had a phone book ad or any Craigslist ad or any advertisement at all online in years and years but they're still finding me because of those so anytime you get a chance to post your information up there somewhere somehow do it because it just compounds it's residual I, I just got a I just got a gig so this this business called me and they said that they were looking for someone to um, take care of their lawn for the season and I happen to be in between yards and so I pulled right in there and the manager gave me this so let's take a look at it can't see if I can figure this out here all right we'll be a little crooked right there here's what they gave me and they, even you guys the new guys can do this new vendor form okay so you can go by your regular name uh, or if you want to go by your business name but I'd say go by your regular name for small businesses and then your type of business lawn care your address blah 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 they're gonna ask you right here your um, federal employee identification number you if you don't have one you can just use your social security number because that's what you will be claiming your stuff with on your um, taxes now there's a w9 attached yes because you won't have to fill out any any of this stuff okay they'll take care of all that because they give you when they give you one of those these small businesses will give you one of these okay and um, all, again all you'll have to do is say your name as shown on your income tax return or your business name if different from above so just use your regular name this is just fill it out like you would and you go oh man I got all these pages of stuff it's all just kind of like the fine print crap but it's a w9 so it's nothing that you really have to worry too much about but keep in mind that every bit of money that you do get from them will be on a check and they will be turning this in and so you better be paying your taxes on it you know but again all you're gonna need to do is just your regular information and you can use your social security number and then you'll have yourself a little small business a little commercial property all right and if, usually that's for stuff you can handle with just even a small mower just some burger king or jack-in-the-box i can go for a couple tacos right now but first things first let's go get the keys out of here i'm back at the dumpster the dumpster in the middle of the road oh yeah oh i got a big limb yeah i got some limbs here <laughs> i wonder if they need me to take care of their yard I got big limbs everywhere I'd say yeah Greg swing on by <laughs> all right time to give this one the first mulch up hey the 48 is gonna do good on this yard what do you think huh I think so let's go right over to the big mound boom, 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 boom. I actually do that yard over there too and they're out I don't want to talk to them right now I don't want to do it today let's let this let's hide This yard's gonna look pretty good in the middle of summer. Just thought I'd show you there's more than it actually meets the eye every time. Oh, put that out there for now. Drag that off at the end. When I got around to the back, it was just look at all that I blew out of there, dude. Look at that. Just gonna mulch it all up. Make it nice and spiffy. <laughs> well, another jacked up cleanup all done. Not bad. Good enough for the first time. I'm gonna hit the dump and get rid of this stuff. Look at this big stick that was on the yard. I had to break it in half. And it still went all the way up to here. People are looking at me, but I don't care. You're looking at me too. I'm looking at myself actually. Right now I am. So I'm gonna go to the dump and see if my buddy's working. 
We had the guy with the front loader. Excavator or bulldozer. Remember that? I said that last year. I go, what is that thing? And you guys go, oh, you don't know? No, I, I don't really care. <laughs> Oh, I'm back here. My buddy's in the shack. That's what he was talking about. He doesn't want to be in the shack. He'd rather be out here with uh, the sticks and leaves and grass in his front loader, staying busy working. It makes the day go by faster for him. And I tell you what, my days fly by. I just have so much going on. There's not enough hours in the day. And um, that's a good thing. because I do this so that I can um, have my evenings. And I'm glad I, I actually created a sort of a nine to five job, at least the closest thing that I could possibly create to one. And um, just like him, you know, he's, he's busting out his hours at work, doing what he's gotta do so that he can um, go fishing. That's what he was trying to say when he was going like that in the, tr in the front loader. Um, he wants to go fishing because it's getting good weather. And that's it, man. Make this fit your lifestyle so that you can actually have a good life and do a few things and enjoy it, you know. We're only here for so long and a lot of stupid stuff is coming our way. So when we get a chance to be cool, go fishing, take the kids to the park, maybe go swimming, whatever, do it. There's nothing wrong with it, man. Stay happy. Look at that. Five yards down. I still had time to come home. Get the truck, pull up here, and put down the mulch. I just spread those bags. Let me tell you something. It shouldn't take you 15 minutes to do something little like that. If it took you 20 minutes, I'd be shocked. Check this out. Look how easy that goes down. All I'll use were the gloves. Put the bags up there, ripped them open with my hand. Crawled around, spread it out a little bit good enough that's all they wanted and I will be spraying stuff as it pops up and I will spray all the cracks and all that and um, I'll show you that sometime but that's not something you really want to get into right off the bat you just want to be you don't want to be spraying yards and treating yards unless you get a license for that and you study up on it because you can actually poison someone or an animal um, and there's wind drift and you can soak in you can get on plants you can get on like tomato plants and stuff that they're gonna eat, so you need to be cool with that. But um, check the yard out. Okay, small mower on the front, right here. Why? Because I felt like it. But look, two different types of grass. Green on that side, not green on this side. Is it dead? No, it just hasn't kicked in yet. Some of my yards, the whole yard looks like that right now. And. Um, you know, it's just the fescue stuff that's growing. So, there you go, I thought I'd show you that. I gotta get back in here, I'm all dirty now. I gotta get in my nice clean truck. Gosh. I had a mailman, sir. Okay, here we go. The new year, same old yard. This is the one that had them cool spider webs in the backyard that one time, yeah. Hopefully they're not there this time. But today I am in a rush, I have to do a lot. So I really only got five yards done yesterday and I'm just playing around going through cleanups and they're taking longer and just scheduling a few here and there but my phone's been ringing, all my people been calling and I'm like, I pencil, penciled it all out on my little piece of paper I look down and I go, holy moly. I hadn't even done that yet this year. I hadn't made a schedule or nothing. I just been kind of winging it. And I, last night I did it. And I looked and I go, I have a lot of yards. Oh my gosh, how am I supposed to do this? So, but I was staying solo. I'm going to do it one more year like this. Eh, who am I kidding? Maybe 10 more years like this. I hope. Hope I can pull it off that long. Got the same stuff. Got some oil with me though. I had to grab another pack of that out of the cabinets in the garage. Still no big mower. 
Hey, what's going on? Still going to be using that one until I get through every yard because I am not going to mess up my new one. All right, freaks are just at the front yard. Right there. And I was going to show you these. These are mole traps. That one looks like it's been tripped already. He had these put in. He's been having moles now. He does have this um, yard fertilized. And um, that one looks tripped too, but I can't really tell. He had a big problem with the grass getting killed. So now he's like taking care of it. He's getting it all treated and he has it uh, grub act or whatever the grub stuff sprayed down and all that. But check these things out. These are mole traps and they're like them, you know, old bear traps. But look at this freaky one. What's up with that, huh? I know some of you guys have used those um, peanuts and poison peanuts and stuff and they I guess they can work but not all the time he resorted to these and so some guy come out and put them all in for him he's gonna come back and check on them freaky stuff huh anyway I did the backyard with the 36 we got the ditch over here Little snakes oh yeah this yard gets some freaky snakes. Going mole hunting. That is a crazy one there. Third yard of the day, another cleanup. More leaves and sticks. I just walked the yard, picked up all the crazy stuff, put it in their trash can, and um, this is the yard in between the ugly yard and the mow and go field. So it'd be perfect for the 48 later on in the future. Until then, I get to have a lot of fun. The wind has kicked up, so I'm gonna have to narrate over this next part here. And boy, it was windy. It's still windy a couple days later here as I narrate this. And, um, you know, it makes it a lot harder to get all these leaves out of the little beds. You know, the people call up, Greg, can you come get all the leaves up out of my yard? And it's like, oh my gosh, your yard's got all this little funky stuff everywhere, little leaf catchers. But, you know, it's cool. They're in between the ugly yard and the field, which I believe my 48 should do pretty good here. I'll have three in a row that I can um, just hop on the 48 and let it go, you know. Um, Got to be a good test. That would be a fun day. That might be, um, might be happening here in a couple weeks just to test that sucker out. Here's what I think of the yard. Eh, I've seen better. Wow, that was not easy. Not easy at all. <laughs> the wind was ferocious. So everywhere I was um, blowing the leaves out, they were trying to go right back in. So that's something you have to deal with in the spring. You get the um, super windy times, you know. It's kite flying season right now. We just flew some kites the other day. So <laughs> the leaves were flying like kites. But it's okay, you know, you can do it. and. You know, this one I got to use the 36 on, but if you guys got the 21-inch mowers, just stick to yards that you can do. And, you know, they're around. Um, the first cuts, I tell my people that they're not going to look that perfect. And they know that now, because I've done them for a few years. But, like, even the new ones, I tell them, I'll do a cleanup, but it's not going to be a perfect cleanup. It'll get better each time I cut, because I am one person, and I want to stay one person. And um, I don't have time to deal with all that. So the first one's sort of like a mulch up. And then you'd be surprised how, how quickly the yard just turns green and nice just by um, mulching up, you know, 80% of the leaves. I left a bunch of stuff behind their garage. And then next time I'm going to go ahead and um, scoop all that out with a can. And then the rest that's in the yard, you know, it'll go away by the second cut, third cut. 
That's kind of how I do it. I know um, you guys have some areas where people want it to be pristine the very first one, but you're going to have to go in there with special equipment and a crew. You know, that's not something I can do in my town or want to do. Wednesday night time to take the trash out for Thursday morning pickup coming along here the wind's still blowing I'm not really thinking too much about it until I lose control of the trash can and it falls over dents my new truck now how would I react to something like that I reacted like a typical man I cussed so freaking loud, followed by a quick, and I mean a quick, slamming of the fist on top of my trash can, like that, to where I broke my trash can, but I didn't break my fist. And you say, oh, that's crazy. Crazy people get stuff done. Angry people get stuff done. Right, it's motivation. You gotta have that in you still. You got some testosterone. Women, you got some testosterone too. You get all hot blooded, get pissed off. Somebody dents your truck. You're gonna get up and you're gonna go clean out your truck bed right now. And get rid of all this trash I've been picking up out of the yards. Got all these trash cans from that first yard I did today. It's okay. It's okay to get pissed off. Throw some punches. All right. Get stuff done. You have some life in you, man. Don't be happy with the way things are. You know? Make them the way you want them to be. I want my truck to not be dented, but I'm not going to get it fixed. I am letting it go. Well, until the next time I wash my truck. Next time I wash my truck, I'll be thinking, man, I hate that trash can. Hooper, do you like those cuss words I said? He doesn't like them. He's heard plenty of them. And he's heard plenty of them. And he'll hear some more. But the girls didn't hear it. They were in here. They're on YouTube. YouTube. Oh my gosh, I hear Macarena. I'm out of here. I'm out of here. Scared. Ah, uh, I had to catch the trash truck just for you trash truck freaks because I know a few of you have it in your name and a few of you actually ride around in trash trucks all day and then cut grass in the evenings. That's right, hard working freaks. They gave him a double whammy. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yep, it's still there. Yep, it's still there too. <laughs> the rain's on the way, but I'm gonna get some stuff done. I told you I'd be back here. Go ahead and pull these things out of here. I'll put them back when I'm done. Hey, the police are here. I better get this stuff done with the quickness. Well, I got it done, but it's raining. And I don't think it's gonna stop. 
So one and done. Not like I'm scared of rain, but there's no reason to go out in it this time of year. I'll save that for May and June. Heck, even July if it rains. You seen me get a couple of those downpours last year. Yep, no reason to do it right now. So I guess we're going to um, wrap this up. Good thing I didn't even take a shower. I just kind of jumped out of bed, dropped the girls off, and started cutting. Yeah, we'll go ahead and go freak vlog for a while. I got stuff to do. All right, let's go get some stuff done. Look at my truck. Oh, what a mess. But hey, at least I'm not out cutting wet grass. All right, first stop, pay my phone bill. How you doing, sir? Gotta pay some money. Got some money, all right. Uh, all right. Doing today, sir. Oh, not bad. What's going on, man? Yeah, the world is beautiful. Oh, that's why I'm on SSW. Yep. That's ridiculous. So, so is that why you can take your lunch at 12? Or I was going to do it. If you do 12, I'll do 1. Okay. That'll work. Let's we'll set that up now. If it's super way. slow. Yeah. You could do 12, 30. Let's get these out the way. I'm just doing that. I don't mind taking it. Huh? I'm not even going to let them You can do 11, 30. That's you how Kane does it. Kane literally goes well, into work and does it right out of the gate. I don't care how you do it. You can do 11, 11. You can do, well, you got to get, it's just, I'm going to do 11. Slow. You can do it from 11 o'clock. Okay. Check it out, Scott. Real quick, check it out. This is gonna help you sell it. So, this is actually what the system looks like up and running. That's my house. I'm, I'm watching my front door live. That's crazy. This is my rat yard. Got a camera that was sitting Pay my bill. All right. Oh, cool. Well, thanks, man. Yeah, no problem. Now they treat me nice, they open the door for me on the way in, on the way out. All you have to do is pay hundreds of dollars. <laughs> okay, next step, Regions Bank. So if you have a Regions Bank in your area, they might be a good place to open up your um, business account because they let me do it with, um, with just your basic business license. I didn't have to have an LLC or any of that stuff. So. I have one, I got my debit card um, with my business name on it and everything. And it's a good thing I do because I have checks made out to my business name. So this is from this week so far. I have eight checks. So you're gonna have to be able to take checks, people. Let's see, what does this one say? Whoa, 350 bucks. That was some prepay. A big cleanup and some prepay. So let's go in and put this in my bank. I'm not taking a camera in here though. They might think I'm up to something shady. All right, let's see what's going on here. Some letters too. All right, let's take this outside and open it up. Ooh, the sun's coming out. 
Okay, set my credit card payment off. That's right, I do use my credit card still, but I always try and pay it off. But look what was in the package. Grass Gangsters. Very original, very cool. Cut you a deal. I will be wearing this in a t-shirt workout video. Thank you to everyone that sends me stuff. I really appreciate it. I know you guys really like um, seeing your t-shirts in a video and I will always wear them. I still have a few more that I haven't got to yet, but they will be coming. There goes a guy mailing his letter. He's gonna send himself off a t-shirt to somebody. <laughs> I think it's great, man. I love this stuff. You know, original, that's originality right there. More on that when I make the video. Matter of fact, here's a t-shirt somebody sent me a while back. I might wear this today. See, I don't want to wear them to cut grass in because I really appreciate these. And these are you guys, is, you know, your, your, your work shirts sometimes, but I think they're cool. I want to like save them. So I want to work out in them and then um, collect them. I think it's neat. I appreciate everything, guys. If it wasn't for you freaks being cool to me, I'd just fade away from YouTube. Well, heck, it's raining hard again, and I'm hungry. So we're gonna stop at the Great Wall Chinese Buffet. After this, I have one more freaky place to go. All done. Let's see what my fortune is. Device, so they know where the postman is. Yes, he does. He has to Your hard work is about to pay off. Yes, he does. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. well, well, thank you. He had a payload due when I asked. Oh, you have to crack this one off. You will bring sunshine into someone's life this week. People brought sunshine into my life. Maybe I'll bring them to theirs. Save those. Collect them. Alright freaks, I just went in Rural King. They actually carry steel products and they are a farm supply store. If you do not know what a farm supply store is, it's um, where you get all the wacky stuff. They have chickens and bulk grass seed and all your um, farmer clothes and pulleys for your tractors and PTOs and they got trailers for sale. They got this stuff. So I bought another little sprayer. $9.99. Some weed and grass killer. Now the wind's so bad. Some of you freaks know what this is. So yeah, you can't be going and you can buy this stuff legally, but you can't be charging people to put it down. Okay, you need a commercial applicator's license to do that. And I bought another head and um, another head that's another spool. And I bought some of the little one gallon things. Man, that wind is so bad. I was gonna film in there and I actually did film a little bit, but I got my groove blown because some dude, some employee come around and he saw me videoing the chickens and he um, called the manager on me and said there's a guy back here videoing and the manager called and said can I help you I said I'm just videoing the chickens you know he said oh, we just want to make sure you're not like from another store or something like or a corporate spy or whatever <laughs> I said no man I'm just like you know fascinated by lawn equipment and chickens and stuff is that cool he said yeah whatever but to be honest it just kind of blew my groove so I just went ahead and got my stuff and got out of there but let's go take a look real quick at these trailers. So somewhere in your area, there has to be a farm supply store, okay? So these say $1,200. We have to get a little basket. We got round tubing. This is more like my style right here. What is this, 1769? This one's got the, the side right here. ATV. Pretty cool. But yeah, it's like I say, man, when you go hanging flyers and stuff, all it takes is one person to kind of blow your groove. So, you know, 
I'm with you on that. It still happens to me. I got shut down. Oh well, hey, we're gonna end this video now because I have so much footage from this week. I don't even know what I can make out of it. It's gonna be like, I have like too much footage. So I'm gonna have to cut out a bunch of the yards I film and stuff, just put stuff together for you. And um, I'll be back next week because I'm not gonna stop cutting grass. You shouldn't either. It gets better, it gets easier, you get it under control. I'm a little stiff and sore already, but that's to be expected too. That goes away.